six, five. All right, good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Starboard Portal. We are live today with Mike Kushner of Sailing Performance Training. He's got a great session for you and he's gonna deliver some best practices for athletes training from home. With that, Mike, feel free to take it away. Thank you, Brittany. Super excited to be here with all of you and uh, hope I can provide a little bit of insight into these crazy times that we're in. Uh, as you can see, I'm, I'm in my home office, um, stuck at home. Uh, as my, my in-laws would say, we're safe at home. Try to keep it positive. Uh, this is, you know, it's an interesting time. I think we all have to just take a deep breath and say, um, you know, hey, it is what it is. We're, uh, we're, we're, we're going to do the best we can. And as athletes, with all my athletes that I coach, you know, we're, we're talking about how to take advantage of this opportunity and <clears throat> use the time at, at home to, to really train and focus on the fundamentals in a sense too, um, the basics. So my goal today with you guys is to, to really help provide some insight into some of the areas and aspects we work with our athletes to, uh, to try to really create a routine at home um, that allows for success uh, within training, within life, within um, balance of, of work and other priorities. Um, it's really what it is, it's balance with, with all of your priorities. So with that, we'll get started. Uh, I have YouTube live on my phone. So if you have questions, post in the comments. I'll try to catch them along the way. Um, but I also will review at the end of the session and uh, address anything. And if I don't get to it right away, I'll try to touch base on it afterwards too. Um, let's see here. All right. So topics today, you know, what are the best practices while training at home? How to do it successfully? Um, <clears throat> I'll touch on what the current state of training looks like. <clears throat> creating structured routines at home, how, how to do that. Um, staging your fitness space, why that's so important. And ensuring you have a support system that can help you along the way. So current state of training. Uh, I heard I, I, my sister-in-law is gonna have a baby coming up here in the summertime and I heard they're calling it generation C uh, for this next generation. Um, maybe we could call the next generation of athletes or the future of athletes maybe different relative to what we know is true in terms of training. Um, you know, for the most part, all athletes within all sports have had their complete training and competition schedule totally uprooted. Um, as we know, the Olympics is canceled, not canceled, sorry, postponed till 2021. Uh, we don't know exactly the details of that, but we know we have more time uh, and we just need to get through this uh, tough transition at the moment. And, you know, everybody's schedule, at least from what I can tell, is, is pretty much transitioned all the way through August at this point. Um, those competitions in Europe and everything that we know was going to be on our athlete schedules is, is totally changed. So as a result, the athlete's focus has changed towards, you know, developing a routine that's in a very different landscape and in a different, very different place. And at the moment, it's at home. Um, in the future, maybe it'll be at home or on the road or in a gym, but We'll see, you know, we'll see how the landscape continues to change. All the physical training is, you know, limited to at home or outside space. So we have to become creative in, in how we use that space. And it's extremely important. So I'm gonna pop out of this shared screen and share another screen. I wanna share, share just what some of my athletes are doing. And maybe you saw Paige Raley post this uh, on her social media but I got this text before it was even social media. I'm her coach um, and I laughed right away. I mean, this is the type of creativity and um, yeah, use of space that we need from our athletes at the moment. Um, but it, 
doesn't make it easy. Like, I made a squat rack and uh, a lunge rack, we'll call it. So, here we go. It's the bottom section. Oh, there. Definitely activates my core because I've got weights. But here we go. Okay, so there's a there's a quick insight into what my athletes are are doing at the moment, or what they're trying to do, how they're making uh, some creative space and equipment to be able to achieve their training goals, even in spite of limitations. Um, and you know, for high performance high performance athletes like Paige who are obviously qualified for the Olympics um, and need to continue making gains. These are, these are some of the things that we need uh, to do for these athletes is, is really create a space and an opportunity for them to continue to train. It's not easy. Um, I think we're all a little bit thankful that the Olympics did get postponed just because this allows us to take a deep breath and, and put some perspective on it, not put so much pressure on these athletes to continue to train in, in really not non-ideal circumstances. However, the life goes on and we must continue with, with, with the landscape that we have. So when ordinary household items become fitness equipment, uh, if you follow Sailing Performance Training, my company, uh, we did on Instagram, uh, hashtag keep training challenge, 10 day challenge. <clears throat> it ends today. So today is day 10 if you want to join. Um, and as you can see here, <clears throat> a couple 470 ladies uh, using pots and pans and dishes and wine glasses to uh, perform a three point single leg uh, balance drill that we had up there. Um, have to get creative, have to make it fun. Um, you know, for a lot of the community, this is a difficult time. And uh, if we can make training fun and make it a part of everyday life uh, within our circumstances and within our family and community and our space, we're going to be more successful uh, at the bigger picture of it and get it in a lot more. So follow Sailing Performance Training. Keep training challenge if you want to do the 10 days, post your videos, make it fun. That's the goal. So creating athletic routines at home. This is really the crux of the um, solution, I guess. It is the solution behind making at home training successful. It's not just having a space. It's not just having equipment that say you purchased from Rogue or Amazon that you know, you are set up for at home training. It's really the routine behind it and juggling all the other priorities that um, are, are necessary for, for us to uh, um, juggle in these, in these strange times. So learn, how do you learn to create a new routine? I mean, I remember a couple of weeks ago when we were faced with this, you know, everybody's now safe at home and working from home remotely for the most part, you know, our routines completely change. And, you know, for a lot of athletes, as we move from a new venue to uh, back to school for a student athlete, um, a new school schedule with classes, um, uh, yeah, into a competition, you know, every week for a sailing athlete, especially every week or month, there's some sort of new routine or new venue or new location that requires a slightly different strategy behind you, how you approach your day. Um, and this was a big uproot from what everybody's used to, to now being at home, trying to juggle many different things. So whenever athletes and just uh, us as uh, business people, family, parents, transition to a new phase, uh, a new routine. These are some of the things that are important to consider. So one, just make sure you list the priority tasks that are important um, for you, for your life, for your work, for your family. Um, what aspects require your attention each day? 
family work, nutrition, fitness. And, and I put those in a specific order. Um, I obviously value family as number one, work as number two. And then oftentimes, you know, with a lot of people, nutrition and fitness are kind of lower priority. Um, and it's just the nature of, you know, that family and work kind of taking a, a front role in, in what we do in our daily lives. But oftentimes those lower priority items often get overlooked. And so by including nutrition and fitness as one of the top five uh, or a few of the top five, it requires you to piece those in into your routine. Um, and, and that's the key of it, right? We can't just say, well, it's not a priority. Um, these other things are gonna take more of the time. We have to balance it all together. That's just for general good life work balance. Uh, you have to have those pieces in order. So once you know your priorities, create a schedule behind it. Um, there's a bunch of different tools to be able to do that, um, but place all those priority tasks into a daily calendar um, and with specific times that you're gonna complete them. And it may change, you know, based on the day, based on the week, um, weekday versus weekend, but really place it on a certain time domain. And I always tell my athletes, you know, it doesn't matter if you roll over into another, you know, blocked schedule, that, uh, a task that you want to do. It's just a rough guideline for you to follow and, and to keep track of, hey, what should I be doing at this specific time? And then implementation of it, you know, share it with your family. It's got to work with your family, uh, especially at, at home if you're juggling uh, a kid or uh, say a pet or um, grandparents or anything like that. You have to make sure that all the schedules somewhat work together so you can um, help each other through the process and keep each other accountable. Uh, if you set yourself for a workout routine at 4 p.m., your family knows it and they're gonna help you succeed in that. Set reminders either on your phone and your calendar, um, creating good food prep routines where you can uh, prepare meals ahead of time so that when it comes to time to eat, it's not a huge time suck and you can just get right to it. Uh, stage your fitness, meaning your area and your space so you have a designated space to be able to train is super important. And it's not such a big leap to say, you know, hey, I need to clean the house and the garage before I even get to training. Well, we, as we know, that's not going to happen in the next uh, day. Um, adapt as you find what works. And that's the most important part. Um, there's no routine that's going to go 100% correctly. Uh, you're going to learn each day and day in, day out what works and what doesn't work um, and keep adapting it. Again, looking for questions. If you have questions, please, please let me know um, in the YouTube live. All right, so I'm gonna go through a couple of routines. Um, these are specific routines of athletes that I have in the system. Um, athletes within sailing performance training uh, range from 13 year olds up to 60 year old athletes. Uh, some are business people, parents, student athletes all of the above. So from day one of this happening and part of our process in general is to develop a routine for each of our athletes. Um, and interestingly enough, a conversation and consult I had with this particular athlete was that he had never truly created or written down a routine for himself. He's in his mid thirties, successful businessman, has, has multiple employees under him. Um, and just the act of writing it down has made a difference in terms of him actually completing some of these aspects, specifically those lower priority aspects, the fitness and the nutrition. Um, so just a quick review of this, you know, from a business standpoint or a business person standpoint, how do we balance that life work uh, aspect? So 6 a.m. wake up coffee, 7 a.m. crosswords, text, food. He gets in his aerobic exercise right in the morning. The nice thing about aerobic exercise in the morning, first thing of your day, is that it helps promote blood flow, 
which helps increase cortisol, which is your stress hormone, basically gets your body moving and active for the day. So if we don't get active in the morning and that, and that aerobic exercise could look like a, a walk with your dog in the park or around the block. Um, it could be on a treadmill or on a bike, very structured routine. Um, it could be good yoga flow or something like that in the morning, but getting blood moving, getting a light sweat in, in the morning is a key to success through the rest of the day. So either that's a structured workout session as my athlete has it here, or it's just part of your morning routine. One aspect that I wanna make sure everybody understands is that fitness at home doesn't have to be a one hour or 90 or, or two hour block of time that you have to dedicate. It's living a lifestyle that allows you to be fit and athletic through the day. As an example, one of my athletes uh, who is a student athlete, we'll get to hit with student athletes next, um, we're, we're breaking out little 10 to 15 minute blocks of training that he can do throughout the day in between classes to make it more successful. Um, so that is another way to look at this. Going through the rest of his day, you know, there's balancing between email and work, lunching chores, because we are at home now. Um, then a, a evening movement workout is designated for him at 6 p.m. and then an evening routine to ramp down. So this is one way to skin the cat, as they would say, for business people. And everybody's gonna be slightly different in how they create their routine. All right, so for the student athletes out there, um, you know, this, this, this is a very interesting time right now for student athletes, um, primarily all colleges and universities and high schools are doing virtual remote classes, online classes. So instead of uh, getting up, waking up, taking a shower, getting dressed, um, grabbing your book bag and actually leaving the home to go to class. You, you know, I've had athletes texting me saying their lifestyle is great. I just roll out of bed, do my workout, sit in my pajamas on my bed and do my classes. I mean, that's what life has come down to at the moment, um, which, you know, that can be a great routine. Uh, that can be a great lifestyle, but it can, it can get kind of dry in the long term. Um, so we need to learn how to balance that for the student athlete and make sure that they are scheduling their day appropriately, creating some kind of structure around their, their training uh, and around their classes that provides guidance for them to know when to eat, know when to be athletic, know when to clear their head when they're bogged down on the computer all day. Um, things that all people have to manage, but as a student athlete, it becomes even that much harder when we don't have a structure or institution helping guide us into where we need to be and what we need to be doing on a daily basis. Um, I've had some of my student athletes in consults say that their friends are pretty much up from two in the morning till 11 the next morning uh, playing video games. I mean, that that's the state where uh, p athletes, and, and maybe these aren't necessarily the athletes that are doing this, hopefully not, um, but that's the state of youth, uh, what the day-to-day -day looks like for youth right now, unfortunately. And um, we really need to help as parents create some routine uh, around what the students are doing and how they can live a better athletic lifestyle. So this is one of my student athletes. Um, she's in college, uh, finishing her first semester. Um, and, you know, for her, she created a routine around this new lifestyle at home, wake up at 7am, work out right away. You know, she, she said, especially she is now on the East Coast, her school's on the West Coast. So all of her classes are going to be loaded in the afternoon based on time zone changes now. So she said, I'm going to wake up, get the workout done right away, spend a good amount of time for myself during that morning time, uh, and then have some open time where I can play. 
Uh, I can't emphasize enough that now that we are home, this actually provides a lot of great opportunity, especially for those athletes that are under 15 years old or students that are under 15 years old. Make sure you're getting out and playing and being fun and active. Um, this is an opportunity where we actually are stepping away from structured sports, um, which we at Sailing Performance Training ha have, have really done a push and US Sailing's doing a push too, which is great just behind early specialization and trying to combat um, the aspect that we're, you know, are we pushing these athletes too hard, uh, too fast into competition? Well, we're forced to not compete. So let's create a better balance behind training and behind uh, lifestyle of a young youth athlete. Um, and, you know, if we can provide structure behind that, that's the cool thing is that even though we're not competing, let's provide structure around that play and, and make sure you're allocating some time for that throughout the day. Um, as you can see, then, then classes in the afternoon, pretty back to back to back. So, you know, we had recommended uh, jogging in place while you're uh, taking the class, get on your bicycle or, or, or um, spin bike while at home and take the class while you're moving, um, jog in place, um, do some movement between the classes just to get the blood flowing. Make sure you have some snacks and nutrition water during those classes. Those are good helpful tips to keep athletic and athletic lifestyle. And then she has a yoga Pilates virtual class that she wants to do uh, that's, that's going live for her. So there's lots of great opportunities for, for students who like to be virtual or, or know how to use technology well um, that can take some classes in group training, group fitness uh, that's still trying to um, you know, help them uh, accomplish their training, but maybe in that group mentality, which is a little bit more enticing for, for an athlete like this. All right, so then it becomes, go, goes to parents, right? And I'm a parent, I have a one-year-old. This is my wife, Lauren, our son, Andrew, and our dog, Foxy. Uh, I took this yesterday. Uh, fun picture, just us trying to juggle all the different schedules of people in the household. We also have our in-laws who just came last night. So now we not only have my work, Lauren's work, Andrew's daily routine, Foxy, obviously, she, I mean, she's pretty self-sufficient, just has to go out for a walk every once in a while. And then the in-laws, like what, what okay, how, how do we incorporate them into our daily routine? So that that's a struggle, you know, we're at home as parents and, and we're trying to juggle the work and life balance also all the other priorities in life. And, you know, I think for us, we had to take a step back and put a little less pressure on ourselves as parents and in our business world to say, you know, we're going to have to take times where we're just focused on the family and help each other to uh, uh, allow, allow space for one person to work and then allow space for the other person to work. In the same fashion, allow space, you know, from 4.30 to 6.00. We alternate between diaper changes, dog walks, and fitness for both parents. Sometimes it can be uh, together as a family, we're doing some sort of fitness, or it's, uh, hey, you go work out like I did yesterday, a little barbell session in my home gym, went for a four mile run while my wife took care of the baby, took the dog for a walk. I came back took care of the baby. She did a workout for 30 minutes in, the, in our home gym. So you have to support each other through it. That's the only way possible of actually achieving it um, and really sticking to that routine. And, and you know, we, we wrote it down, put it on the fridge. Here's our routine. We're going to stick to it. We have little scratch outs and side notes and changes that we're doing as, as we go. Um, and you have to be flexible too. You know, thing, things are going to change. Things are going to come up that um, calls from work, emails that you have to attend to. You just have to support each other. That's the biggest thing from a family side of things. You have to be a team in this in this environment um, to really succeed and succeed both on the the work side, the family side, and you know your own training side. It has to be a team effort. Still looking for questions. If you have any, all right. 
So I'm going to pop out. I'm going to show you actually a little bit of a uh, routine that my wife and I did recently. Um, give you a little insight into the struggles of training as a family. So here we go. All right, time lapse, obviously. But we got my baby in the foreground, always wanting to see what we're doing, kind of playing on his own. Dog in the background, somewhat obedient, staying where he is, um, and just jug juggling, juggling life. Um, this was a fun little circuit that we put together, uh, testing a program I had for my athletes. Uh, and it was just a fun experience to, to go through as a family. And I wanted to share that with you all. Um, you know, the, the, just before we had done that, I'll tell you that the mood at home was pretty um, fatigued, tired, ready to take a nap on the couch, pull up Netflix. Um, we were ready to just call it a day. Um, but we said, we rallied, we said as a team, you know, baby can watch, dog's going to be fine. The house is a mess. Let's just get in that fitness. And that, and that's where the team and, and support of the family comes, comes into play. All right. So how to, how to implement that, some strategies behind on how to implement that. We touched on some of them, but really make sure that you're family members are supporting you. Um, set those routines. Food prep, we won't talk too much about it during this call. Maybe we'll do another webinar on food prep and nutrition, uh, how to really master food prep at home. Um, but it allows you to get ahead. Uh, we cook probably two to three times a week for the family. And as a result, the rest of the meals are already prepared already ready for us to accomplish, uh, accomplish to eat. So it, it saves a lot of time, um, a lot of time. Stage your fitness. We'll talk about this in the coming slides. Have your space, lay out your fitness, your clothes the night before. Make sure you have everything you need already prepared so there's no excuses. Um, one, one recommendation I heard from a couple athletes is wake up, put your tennis shoes on before you have your coffee, lace up your tennis shoes. There's no excuse not to go out and go for a run, go for a walk, whatever that morning fitness looks like. And then adapt your plan. You know, I think this is something that we have to just be accepting of that things change and give, our, give, us, give ourselves a little bit of grace, just that things are gonna change. Um, and kind of learn from what happens, what, what went well, what didn't go well, what can I change? So basic uh, concept of path of least resistance. Um, by having your plan, nutrition and fitness stage, you will have the workings of a direct path towards success at training at home. Uh, it is so much easier to train at home if you have that plan, the nutrition, and your fitness stage. If it's not, it's going to become a, there's there's going to become um, a, a non-direct path, an indirect path. Um, so that's such an important point. And then the second point: know your distractions. Um, I know everybody's been on Netflix, Amazon Prime, YouTube. Uh, there, there's been a lot of that happening. Uh, my phone tells me that my screen time has gone up <laughs> in the last couple weeks. It, it's going to happen, but know your distractions and know when you're going to allow yourself those distractions. Um, don't let them consume your day. All right, so staging your space and equipment getting into the crux of actually how to implement training. This is gonna look different for every athlete. Uh, even within our space, every single athlete that was normally on a weight training gym routine, had their gym that they go to, now is faced with, okay, what do I have at home? Goes back to the, the, the Paige Rayleigh video of creating a squat rack with um, garbage bags, full of sand and a, a bottom section of a laser mast, right? Um, people can get creative, but understanding what you have and creating a space with what you have is the most important. 
So a couple different concepts and, and programs that we've developed at SPT, um, a body weight only, right? Create the space that you can dedicate to your routine, even if it's body weight only. If it's in the living room, on your rug, in the living room, move the coffee table, <clears throat> that's your space, then that's your space and, and really dedicate that to, to your space. Um, that's one of, in the background, that's one of my athletes with uh, his kid uh, helping with some weighted push-ups, um, quotations helping. Resistance bands. So, so we have on our website, we have in the products tab of our website, we have resistance bands, just links to Amazon um, products, um, but resistance bands that are really helpful for travel. It's, it's called our travel and mobility kit, <clears throat> but resistance bands can be really effective, both the longer ones, as well as the shorter mini bands that, that go between your ankles and your knees. But it, it's really effective at increasing muscular tension within body weight activity. Um, so it allows us to get a better stimulus from your training um, versus just getting that body weight only. Uh, determine your aerobic equipment. Um, it could either be walking, running, jogging, um, rowing, if you have a rower, biking, if you have a bike. Uh, here's one of our coaches, Carson Crane, in the background, flipping the bike upside down and using it as a hand crank uh, for grinding practice. Uh, kind of a joke in a sense, but that's the, that's the, you have to really understand what you have and what you have access to. Um, a lot of athletes are starting to run again uh, after they haven't run in a long time. And it, it's because of the limitation of equipment. We have to be careful about that too, right? We have to know what our chronic workload is. If we have experience and training experience in running, then get to it. Go on the trails, go, go, go for a run. Um, but if you haven't been running for the past couple of years, it's really a slow drip approach that you should take towards your training, uh, meaning start with walking go tempo runs where you're doing 15 seconds on, 45 seconds off of just walking. Um, start to increase the capacity and the time that you're doing it. If you've designated that time in your routine to aerobic training, go out, but start slow and increase capacity as you go. That's a better, more sustainable way of, of training. And then the last would be, you know, if you have gym equipment at home, um, that's great. That's, that's going to be a piece of the puzzle that we can create programs behind. Um, there's one cool thing that a lot of gyms, now that pretty much all gyms are closed, there's, there's some gyms that are creating a new strategy behind keeping their clientele, keeping people paying the subscriptions to the gym by actually loaning out equipment. Um, so, so you can see here, this is actually my home gym in our garage, uh, open air garage. Uh, some of it's mine, some of it's actually loaned from our local gym. And um, <clears throat> that has allowed us to actually create a space that is almost replicating or even better than maybe what we could get at the, the gym itself. It's right outside the door. Um, so there's some opportunities, check with your gym, see if they would be open to leasing or letting you borrow some equipment. Um, a lot of our Olympic athletes that have partnered with gyms in their local area, grabbed a kettlebell, grabbed a, a medicine ball, grabbed a, a ladder, um, stuff like that, that we can, we can use and get access to. So it's another good way to supplement your space at home if, if you are a part of a local gym. Awesome. So then, you know, lastly, what, what's your support system? Who's on your team? Um, this is a big part of training in general, um, making sure that you have a team of people helping you succeed, um, you know, and, and it doesn't really matter what your goals are. We'll talk about that in a sec. Like all, all goals have changed in a sense. Um, everybody's just back down to the bare fundamentals of Let's, let's live a healthy and sustainable life and lifestyle, um, but really making sure you have a team of people behind you that you can be successful with. Um, who in your family is also wanting to become healthier and more fit that you can recruit to do some fitness with you? 
um, who can help you become accountable uh, in your family on a day-to-day -day basis to say, hey, I'm taking the kid, you go out, do your fitness for 30 minutes. That's super important. So it's not only them helping you, it's you helping them succeed. We create that environment at home, you're gonna be more likely to succeed. Remote coach, that's what I do. I'm a remote coach uh, where we touch base with athletes all around the world. Every one of our athletes is affected by this coronavirus. Um, and what I am doing as a remote coach is creating some structure and routines and fitness um, programming with the space and the equipment that they have available to transition through this time so that when everybody is ready to go back to work, to go back to the water, to train, that we don't have this big latency period of non-training, that we've actually created some accumulation of volume of training that is gonna help us succeed when we go back to our normal training, whatever that may look like, or whatever the new normal may look like. Um, so having a remote coach, if, if you've never had a remote coach before, basically it's your, your sailing coach or your, um, yeah, your, your school coach that works with you in a virtual way and touches base on, on how things are going, helps keeps you accountable, helps create an environment that will allow you to succeed with what you have. Um, so that's what we're here for. That's what sailing performance training is all about. We are a location independent business. We are 100% virtual and remote. Um, so if, if, if you want to know more about what that looks like, we're here and, and always happy to help. Um, <clears throat> and then lastly, like te team and friends, you know, we all came from structured potential school programs or coll collegiate teams or uh, Olympic teams. Um, and you know, in the virtual space, there's a lot of cool applications uh, that allow you to connect in this virtual way to support each other's training. Strava, Garmin, um, on our side, Sailing Performance Training, we have our own app that allows athletes to, to, to kind of see where they are and, and what they're doing and, and, and how they're improving. Um, and, you know, I, there's a bunch of social media challenges happening right now. Um, you probably have seen more people working out at home or doing something at home than you normally would. Um, but I think everybody's really striving behind, uh, striving to, to really see how we can support each other as a community um, and help each other succeed and and really look at some of those successes where people are doing things well um, and help encourage people that are kind of stuck, stuck in a routine or, or not feeling well or are sick um, and, and help them get through to that other side. So use the support system well. It's, it's definitely an important piece of the puzzle, not only now while you're safe at home, but while you know, you're training in the future too. All right, changing goals. Um, you know, the coronavirus impact on the sport has been very far reaching, uh, worldwide, every single sport, um, the Olympics are now postponed to 2021. Um, we don't know exactly when they will happen, but we know it will not be this year. Um, so, you know, what does that look like for athletes what's the mentality of athletes right now? And, and how does that change uh, what, what we're doing um, in, in terms of training? Uh, you know, I think, I think we have to give ourselves a little bit of space, especially in the competitive athlete realm and say, you know, let's make sure we're prioritizing what's important right now, which is your health, your family, um, being at home, um, connecting to kind of the roots of what's important in life, right? Uh, it's a scary time. And and I, I think the way that the world community of athletes has um, reacted to this situation has been in, in a sense positive. You know, I think it's hard for individual athletes and, you know, there's highs and lows of being like, this, this, uh, this is not what my plan was. Um, but in a sense, it really allows you to focus on what's important. So that mindset piece, I know we'll have some people coming up in webinars that 
that maybe we'll talk towards the mindset piece, but it's an important piece of the puzzle. You know, keep talking to your family, keep talking to yourself, uh, listen to yourself of how you feel about the situation. Um, and then, you know, just focus on one step in front of the other with, with training and lifestyle and nutrition. Um, those are important pieces of the puzzle right now. Um, we will realign goals. We will have new competitions coming up. We will have uh, different teams that we'll be a part of in the future. Um, but at, at the moment, we need to just simplify our priorities and create new, new goals, maybe progress-oriented goals, maybe personal goals, maybe lifestyle routine goals. That, that's the way that we're going to kind of succeed through this time and, and make the most of this time. So in that light, um, you know, what, what is remote training? Uh, I, I think all of us, including U.S. Sailing, including all different types of um, uh, organizations and educate, uh, institutions are trying to figure out how to do this remote training well, um, how to create an experience for an athlete, for a student that, um, will engage them right in the in the right way and uh, give them the right resources to succeed in in more of a vir virtual world. Um, I saw this coming a long time ago before even you know this this whole uh, safe at home time. Um, but you know the virtual education and, and training it's 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 going to be a bigger part of our life. Um, and, and the key of it is how to create an individualized experience for that athlete or for for our athletes that, that we can um, help them at a very individual level, a uh, very customized level based on where they are and, and what they have um, and what their goals are. Um, so, you know, I, I think there's an opportunity here for a lot of companies and a lot of people to both um, help uh, the community as well as for individuals to take advantage of remote education. Uh, a lot of my Olympic athletes are even saying, hey, I might take a class. I might take a college class just because I'm interested. Um, it's a great opportunity right now to uh, learn. And I, th I think that's where we're gonna grow as a virtual world is uh, having the opportunity for individuals to be self learners and self driven athletes to create the opportunities and um, create some education on their own. So our goal, U.S. Sailing, SPT, uh, is to help deliver some products that way. But, um, you know, you, as, as a community of people, um, be on the lookout, start to look, ask, inquire about what you want to know, um, because people are trying to help, help you. All right, so what's a successful remote training program look like? Uh, there's a little picture on the left here in the sidebar of our app that we have. Um, you know, I, I think there's good interfaces. A lot of uh, trainers and strength and conditioning coaches use say Excel or email or something like that, but there's a good virtual space and, and applications that we can use to help deliver uh, these programs and, and fitness routines um, in a nice transparent way that athletes can and be um, really successful with it. So a couple of the aspects to it, accessibility, um, you know, athletes are constantly on the move, specifically sailors are constantly on the move with training competitions and in our current situation, we're at home. So having some way to, to deliver it is key customizable programs, education need to be customized to the athlete's starting point. So what their current fitness is, and then based on the equipment, like we've talked about, um, creating some structure and routine behind what you currently have. You don't have to spend 10 grand to build a home gym. You can create routine and structure that's very successful with what you currently have. And then accountability, you know, it's, it's, it's part of um, having your team of people, but in a remote setting, making sure that you're doing the right things at the right time to make the gains you want to make. So with that um, selfless plug of SPT medallion program, um, we understand everybody's at home right now. We're offering a two-week free trial of our medallion program. We've had 
a, around a hundred athletes sign up for it just to learn more, to get into a routine, have some sort of structure, baseline structure that they can work off of and then create from there a routine that's right for you. So I put the link here. Uh, we'll probably put it in the YouTube live text or comments or whatever it's called, um, but we'll have that there for you. If you have any questions, please let me know. I want to be able to help you. Uh, I want to be able to help our community. So anything you need, please let me know. To end a quote, uh, this is from LSU's uh, football coach that I had just scanning through the internet had seen for every winning team, there's a key to success. A key to success is to learn the playbook. That's true in football, sport, and that's also true as we take on coronavirus. Um, I think as a world, we're trying to follow the rules from the CDC, from the government, about what is the playbook from a fitness side and a lifestyle and nutrition side. We have to follow some sort of playbook and a routine that's going to help us succeed. If not, you may be dabbling in things, but are we really truly making the gains that we need to make and, and taking advantage and utilizing the best protocol, the best playbook for the situation that we're currently in? So I'll open it up to questions. Um, you know, what areas do you need the most help with? This is very much just the first webinar uh, that we will do with US Sailing and as SPT. Um, so we want to learn from you and, and what you want to know, um, what we can help you with. We will bring those topics to this weekly webinar and really help uh, creates this virtual education and resources that that people are are wanting that they're looking for so i'm going to refresh my youtube and see if anybody has asked questions um and Brittany too maybe you let me know if any if i'm missing any questions right off the bat yeah if you want me to read them for you i'm happy to yeah, that'd be great. Um, maybe field some questions for me. I, I can't seem to view them on my phone here. Sure, no problem. So our first question comes from Peter and he wants to know how important is it to build off days and breaks into your fitness routine and how do you determine the right balance? Yeah, great question. So uh, again, how do you plug in off days and breaks within your training? Um, you know, the, the training split, the weekly split, I call it, of, of what your training would look like um, ultimately depends on your training age and your experience and, and what previous workload you had done. Kind of the example of running, you know, if you've never run before, should you run seven days a week? Probably not. Um, if you have experience doing, say, four days of lifting in a gym, um, and that that's your level of training, you should try to replicate that. You shouldn't, shouldn't necessarily try to do more. Um, and if you do less in terms of your training than what you're used to, um, you're probably just under training at the, at the moment. So in, in general, <clears throat> depends on what equipment you have and what your space looks like. Um, but in general, my guidelines for my athletes is try to be as active as possible through the day. And that's every single day. So if you're a body weight program person um, that just has body weight and you're going to incorporate walking in the morning and some basic movement body weight exercises in the evening, that could be done every single day in my mind. There's no reason that shouldn't be done every single day. Um, we need to try to create the stimulus that you had before uh, in, a, in a kind of secluded environment, isolated environment. So if that's tracking steps, if that's tracking aerobic time, trying to just keep active. If you have more structured uh, lifting experience and you have weights that you can use, try to mimic what you had done before. For a lot of athletes, what I like to do is a, a higher stimulus day for one day, then a lower stimulus day, meaning more supplemental core um, extremity work, arms and legs, 
um, where maybe that higher stimulus day is a squat and a, or a deadlift. Uh, and then the third day is a rest day or a light aerobic session. So that allows you to have a very high stimulus day, a, a lower stimulus day, and then kind of a recovery day. So that's one way to structure it. It's called the conjugate method. Um, another one is to do two days on, one day off, three days on, one day off. Again, it depends on what your pre previous experience is. Um, I'm happy, I think it was Peter, I'm happy to look at your split for you and give you some guidance based on what your previous experience is. Um, but as many things, it, it kind of depends. Great, and then we have another question from Jill, and I think you answered this uh, when you spoke about the medallion program, but yep. maybe you can talk a little bit more about some other options. She would like to know if you only work with high performance athletes and college teams and organizations, or do you have standard packaged routines designed for sailors that anyone can purchase? Yeah, so we, we started out working with the high performance. I, I was an uh, Olympic campaigner myself with, with Fred, the other co-owner. Um, so the progression of the business has been more towards the high-end athletes, but then as transitioned, we're, we're really trying to reach the youth sailors now um, and create packages, not only at the youth sailors, but in, in general fitness uh, for sailing athletes. Uh, it can include non-sailing athletes as well, but um, we, we have a range of programs that could facilitate um, athletes at a range of different levels. Uh, and the goal in, in terms of what we're trying to do is, is reach the athletes when they have a lower training age, a younger experience in strength and conditioning and training so that by the time they get to that opportunity or if they choose to that opportunity to train at a higher level, then we will ultimately be able to help them achieve that those next steps in their career. Uh, so we transition athletes from zero experience, um, whatever age up to um, that highest level in, in the sport and in life. We have people that just are trying to be healthy. Uh, they may have a sailing background, but they just wanna have uh, live long and prosper. That's the type of programming that we, we can accomplish too. Um, so we, we meet you where you are, we're, we're happy to uh, consider any type of athlete within, the, within um, our, our work and we have a team of coaches to support it. So uh, if you have questions, please reach out and let us know. Fantastic. And then we have another one from Meredith and she wants to know for laser sailors, hiking is important, especially in the San Fran Bay area. Can you speak to personal weight distribution and how that affects hiking efficiency? Also, do you have any tips or hacks on that? Okay, the first part, Brittany, you said for late, for hiking athletes. Yeah, correct. Okay, hiking athletes. Yeah, you know, good question. We have, um, you know, both working with laser athletes at the Olympic level as well as trapeze athletes at the Olympic level. I was a trapeze athlete myself, but um, yeah, hiking athletes. You know, the the biggest part of how we assess. Uh, uh, the leg endurance and, and strength of a hiking athlete is primarily, primarily number one, we look at um, overall muscular balance. So are their quads as equally developed as their posterior chain, their glutes and their hamstrings? Um, that, that's primary number one. You know, I think in, in the sport of sailing, we are pri primarily an anterior chain dominant sport which just means that we load our quads, our knees, our shins much more than our glutes and our hamstrings and our calves, just from the lower body um, aspect. So with, with that, if we're overusing our quads and we're underdeveloped in our glutes and hamstrings, it's going to make us fatigue and ultimately limit our potential in the sport or as a hiking athlete. So primary, primary uh, objective number one with our laser athletes and all of our athletes is make sure that there's some sort of muscular balance that's happening there. Um, then at that point, you know, we, we, we look at weight distribution, we look at height, we look at um, kind of the relative uh, physiological traits of each athlete. 
um, but that that comes at the level after we we balance the athlete out, uh, and we find that once we balance the athlete out, they're able to achieve muscle endurance longer. They're able to achieve um, better hiking position, better hiking endurance um, throughout their competitions and their training. So there's there's kind of a two two or three step. Um, training plan there. Um, but number one, you know, without knowing anything about you as an athlete, I lived in San Francisco for, for high school. So I understand the conditions out there. Um, I would say likely there's some balance and development that can be done as a primary base. And then once you have that base, then it's doing sport specific work that will help specialize you for the laser. Um, that that's the key, the key to it, making sure your core is strong, making sure that your hip flexors aren't taking over in the process, making sure that your upper back and your neck and your shoulders are nice and stable. And that allows us to paint a bigger picture. And then as we specialize more into the sport, we can get, find, a, a, a create a, create an athlete out of you that is more specified towards the requirements at, in a laser. Um, so those are, those are some of the concepts. Great. And Christina would like to know if you've spoken at all about nutrition in regard to training. Um, and she's thinking particularly about the youth slash team sailor. The youth slash team sailor? Teen. Teen sailor. Okay. Um, yeah. So we have, we have a nutritionist and dietitian on staff, Hannah. Feinberg. Um, she is great and she works with all of our elite athletes to help create a, a picture and a profile for what they should be doing on and off the water based on their goals. Um, you know, for our teen athletes and our, and our younger youth athletes, ultimately there's a question of, you know, wh where are they currently in their athletic development? Where are they currently in their um, maturation and, and how are their hormones at, uh, impacting their growth? Um, a lot of teen athletes come to me saying, Hey, I need to gain weight. Um, you know, and it, it, I always ask and look from a physiological side, is their body ready to gain weight? Um, are they structurally and hormonally in the right conditions to, to create that? And we look at growth. So where the athlete sits in terms of their um, their gain in height, so their peak velocity and height growth. Uh, and if they've had that growth spurt, they're kind of on the tail end of growing, you know, somewhere in the 14 to 18 age range, that's going to tell us that, hey, they're ready to actually put on some mass, put on some strength. So from, for one, we need to know that, are they ready? And then two, we will develop a program that's appropriate to that. And then three, we will incorporate the nutrition and make sure that that nutrition is supporting the work that they're doing. Um, you know, for, for a lot of our athletes that work with Hannah um, and some of our teen athletes that are transitioning from high school to college, it's really understanding how to balance and incorporate a nutrition plan in in a campus um, cafeteria at school where they don't have access to um, even a microwave at times. Um, so we, with that limited equipment, with the limited support and resources they may have at school, how do you create the correct routine, the correct intake of fuel, for them to succeed uh, both on the water in their sport and in the gym and just overall in life that they're actually fueling themselves properly. Um, we're very careful about forcing people, not forcing, but, but recommending people gain weight too fast, especially at the young age. It takes time, you know, and, and expectation from sailing coaches too. We have to be careful of, especially in the teenage years of, of pushing people to have expectations of weight because, you know, based on where they are in their athletic development, they may still be very early on and, and they may not actually gain the weight that they need from a physiological perspective. 
uh, until a few more years from now. And so putting that pressure on the athlete at their teen years is uh, something that we're very conscious of and, and we help coaches be conscious of that at the college and high school level too. So it's, it's really creating a picture of where the athlete currently sits from a physiological state and a, lot, and a, a athlete developmental state. Um, and then from there, helping to, to reach those goals and helping them transition. Uh, as an example, we, we've had a teen athlete that's worked us with us since he was 15, uh, was sailing in a 4.7, then switched into a radial, and then switched into a full rig, obviously gaining size and weight as he um, went along over, say, two and a half to three years, maybe four years, uh, weighing one. 45, 150, and now he's up in almost the 180 range. So that, that transition for a male athlete and a female athlete can happen quite quick. And it's how you transition through that properly is the most important. Um, the nutrition side is, is super key. And you know, it's whether it's working with the parents to help create the correct meal plan and making sure they're getting the right intake and volume of food, the quality of food, um, or if it's working with the athlete themselves on how to manage the resources they may have at school. Um, in our current situation, it's creating some structured routine around what you have at home and how you can make the best uh, fueling choices for just general life as well as for your fitness. Um, so it's multi-tiered, multi but we, we love working with the teens and we love working, um, helping them achieve their goals, especially relating to nutrition. It sets them up for success in life. If I learn the things about how to meal prep and fuel uh, and, and eat when I was a teen, I, I think my early 20s would have been different in, in how I approached uh, life and, and eating. So definitely something we, we work towards. All right, we've got another question from Kevin and he wants to know if you can address the needs of older sailors, 50 plus in regards to flexibility and injury prevention, particularly in the lockdown period. Particularly in the what area? Lockdown period. Okay, isolation period, lockdown, safe at home. Um, yeah, so, you know, older athletes, uh, more experienced athletes, we'll call you Kevin, um, you know, creating an understanding of where your movement imbalances are is, is, is important into understanding where and what protocols could be put in place to help from an injury perspective or injury um, prevention perspective. Um, we do a movement screen right off the bat that will allow us to see as coaches and you to see, you know, where, where are some of those imbalances that have happened over time, um, whether that's a result of life or the sport or other things that have happened, injuries, um, those sorts of things. So that, that's an area that is, has to be assessed right, right off the bat. And I would recommend um, using a coach to help you assess what areas um, need uh, say care or a protocol to help fix. Um, all movement is integrated with each other. So oftentimes if you have a painful area or an issue area, we have to look upstream and downstream of that area to actually solve the problem. Um, so many times people have elbow or knee issues or some sort of shoulder issue that, um, everybody tries to target the pain, uh, but we need to understand what the root of the movement problem is that's causing the pain. Um, and pain itself is very tricky to diagnose. It's you know, often a result of some nerve and neural communication issues. Um, so helping to clean up that is important too. And, and a lot of those things come from lifestyle, from nutrition and hydration uh, aspects too, to try to remove inflammation. But, you know, from a protocol standpoint, there are loads that you can do at home. I mean, this is the time right now while you are uh, maybe transitioning in your goals. Um, maybe you, you had a certain idea of what you were working towards this year. And now as a result of uh, an event being canceled or things being postponed, 
this is the time to focus on the fundamentals. And I'm talking to a lot of my athletes about that. You know, we're creating corrective routines where maybe we just had to, you know, we need to push through and, and this goal is coming up. So it's the best we can get it right now. Well, now we have time. So this allows us to actually create some great protocols and fix up some of those issue areas, as I like to call them, that would ultimately become a problem down the road. Um, so it, it's 100% a great time to work on that. There's loads of body weight, some banded work, um, a lot of corrective protocols that we can be put in place. Happy to help, Kevin. Um, let, let us know. And over the next few weeks, too, I'm working, one of our coaches is a, um, a physical therapist, works at a clinic that is currently closed, um, but he's a remote coach as well. And so we're going to push out some uh, corrective um, videos just on certain things that you can do, correcting some of the movement baits and balances that we see, you know, starting from the ankles, moving all the way up to the shoulders and neck and uh, wrists, and just, you know, painting a picture of some simple guidelines that you can do and how we approach and visually uh, look at imbalances and, and make those calls of, hey, this is the protocol you need um, and this is how long it's going to take you. So stay tuned for that for sure. Thanks for the question. All right, we've got another one from Krista as a follow-up to the nutrition. She's wondering if you can speak a little more generally on some best food to take out on the water during a regatta. Okay, yeah, great question. Um, <laughs> We've, we've uh, with some of our Olympic athletes, we're really fine tuning what that process looks like over the last few months with the two world championships that we had recently in December and February for most of those athletes that were the Olympic trials. Um, you know, the, the key with anything that you have on the water is you have to, um, you, you have to try it beforehand and make sure it works for you. Um, that is definitely, you have to practice the, the fueling on the water. But generally, you know, good, good practices that you can be put in place and types of food that you can be put in place. Um, you know, it's gonna come from a carbohydrate source primarily. So carbohydrates are your uh, quick, they're the quickest, uh, most quickly adapted fuel source that your body will utilize towards helping create ATP or energy. So carbohydrates are you're gonna be your primary fuel source. What that looks like is gonna depend on what the athlete likes as well as what the athlete can tolerate. So it could, it could range from anywhere of a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, a banana, a, um, let's see, what else? Um, some fruit, like those sorts of things can be good carbohydrates, some more complex, some more simple, but based on what you enjoy and what the uh, climate is like in that area too, will help to dictate if you need more hydrating fuels or you just, you, you can tolerate the, the fuel source that you're eating. Those are good fuel sources in terms of more whole foods. Uh, in terms of more supplemental stuff, there's a lot of good shot blocks and goos and different things that are ultimately created to help with the right root, with the right complexity of sugars and carb carbohydrates and maybe proteins and fats, as well as some um, electrolytes that may be a part of that too. Um, you know, sport drinks are oftentimes deemed maybe not the best fuel source, but it actually is probably one of the best fuel sources just because it allows your body to bring in those carbohydrates, bring in those sugars and use them right off the bat. Again, you wanna look at the quality of it and look at the quantity that you're taking it in and the timing of it, but looking at those and trialing them during this time, maybe ordering from some different companies um, is, is helpful. To, to really test whether it works or not and how your body digests those products. Um, in terms of a post, so we roughly, and I said this is again individualized, but rough uh, numbers, you know, you want to be eating something about 45 minutes to an hour before you compete. So say there's an hour toe out, you want to be having something right before you go to that toe out or an hour before the race, before you warm up. 
something every about 45 minutes, half an hour, 45 minutes, you want to be fueling. Uh, and that's the amount of time with the dose carbohydrate or sugar that you're going to intake that it's going to last in a sense. So, if, you know, if your races are 20 minutes long, um, 30 minutes long, then during that break between the races, you can fuel and you're going to get another dose of energy to fuel you for the next race. And so it's, it's, Instead of thinking of a big meal that you're going to bring out, and it's going to be a sandwich and bread and cheese and, and whatever, um, which common, commonly I see in, in the sailing community, it's thinking about smaller doses of carbohydrate-based energy that you can achieve throughout your day. And then at the end of the day, that's where we focus more on the protein and the fat to help support the breakdown of muscle tissue. Um, that can range from uh, a bigger meal that you had made previously and is, is at the dock and in a cooler for food safety, uh, or chocolate milk is a great resource that we in the U.S. Um, Olympic uh, nutrition community pushes out to our athletes uh, to have on the, on the way in. Um, and that's one thing often athletes miss is they, they, they don't start the recovery and the fueling process until they have gotten already in. And it's kind of missed that window of opportunity for best recovery, which is anywhere from a half hour to 45 minutes. Um, so when you're done sailing on the toe in, as, as, as you're starting to ramp the body down from your effort, start to put in some fuels that you can recover with. This could be a, a whole separate webinar. So uh, it's a great topic I'm, I'm, and we'll touch more on it for sure. Thank you. Awesome. And we've got one last one. And um, I'm curious on routines. What are your thoughts about creating boundaries between work and home, particularly now while so many people are working from home and how fitness can fit into that? Yeah, great question. Uh, you know, I, I'm a, my, my business is basically out of out of the house and at, at, at the moment and it normally is. So I'm used to working from home. All of our coaches are uh, in a sense or working remotely, we'll call it. Um, yeah, you know, this is an interesting time, like I said, where we have to balance both our work expectations as well as the routines and, and um, the routines of other people in the household, right? If that's kids or if it's our significant other or, yeah, a lot of different aspects have to be juggled. Um, I think we're all a little bit strapped on time, feeling stressed in terms of how much we're actually able to accomplish both on the work side and at the life, uh, life side. Uh, and fitness and nutrition, like I said, often are sometimes a lower priority for people. Um, what we find for our athletes and in our household is that if we prioritize the nutrition and fitness and lifestyle characteristics such as good sleep and hydration um, and really support each other through blocking those parts of our life in, even though we're too strapped in a sense with all the other priorities with work and life, um, it helps create a better balance, a better perspective, better mindset. We feel more refreshed. Uh, to be honest, I've been sleeping nine hours a night while I've been home, which is not my normal. My normal is six hours a night right now with work and priorities. But I said, hey, you know, there's, there's only so much I can do in a day. I can't stress myself out. I can't be staying up super late trying to finish all of these tasks. Everybody in the world is in the same boat right now. We have to give ourselves a little bit of grace and, and, and a break and say, let's prioritize our life, our health. Let's not compromise our immune system, which could expose us to other threats uh, and viruses. Let's take care of ourselves right now and prioritize those things and the other stuff will fall into a place accordingly. And as a result, I, you know, I feel more productive in a sense too. And, and there's a better lifestyle and balance at home. So, you know, for, for me and for our athletes, it's really trying to prioritize those aspects of being an athlete higher up in the list, making sure those are a big part of, of how you're planning your day um, and not skimping out on those aspects. Um, 
it means less time on the TV and on the couch and, and those things, so be it. Um, but you're prioritizing the things that are important right now. And at least from a worldwide perspective, that's your health. Uh, and if we can uh, incorporate some better routines on that side of things, even if it's something you haven't done in the past, make some small goals, work towards some simple food prep, um, work towards some simple walking in the morning, whatever that looks like for you, that, that's the main thing at this time is, is trying to incorporate those simple things that's gonna make the biggest difference in your life right now. I hope that answers your question. <laughs> it did. <laughs> All right, well, thanks everybody. Um, you know, Thanks again, Mike, for joining us. I think that we had some really great info here. And uh, if you guys liked what you saw, Give Mike a shout out in the live chat and you can feel free to visit his website. That'll be available in the description as well as soon as this wraps up. And let us know in the comments later if you wanna see more from Mike and what kind of topics you'd like to hear. Uh, stay tuned to the Starboard Portal because he may be joining us again in the near future. And then um, today we have one more session coming up with Betsy Allison and that will be at 2 p.m. Eastern time and she's gonna talk about how uh, to engage more adults at your yacht club. And then coming up next week, we've got a lot more great topics. And so stay tuned. Thanks. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Brittany.